good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? My, oh my, it's nice to see you. Here it is Tuesday, isn't it? Back in the early days, local shows for children tried to be all things to all youngsters. Part Mr. Rogers' father figure, part playful puppets and cartoons, part educational television. All in one package produced live and on a shoestring. Well, good morning, good morning. It was fascinating. I think the, the most impressive part was that it was spontaneous. And it didn't, it was completely unrehearsed. And I truly mean that. And Harold Shaw ought to know. Going on 30 years ago, wearing a hat donated by the Forest Service, khaki shirt and trousers from the neighborhood Sears store, he became Ranger Hal. Happy Saturday morning, if I get a word in edgewise here. And happy Saturday morning to you, too. A staff announcer at Channel 9, he wrote and produced the show in between station breaks. Washington, WTOP, Television 9. When the show went on the air six mornings a week, Ranger Howe had a large supporting cast, a menagerie of puppets. Say, Ranger, in order to learn more about early history, could we maybe take a trip to Europe instead of starting school? Oh, buddy, old sock, oh, buddy, oh, Ranger, maybe? Of course, I recorded the voices. Uh, we were low budget show. <laughs> and and uh, so I would, I did a falsetto voice for Oswald, right? and I, he'd say, hi Ranger, and he'd talk like that, and then Eager Beaver, I could, felt that I needed an oath of some kind on the show. And Eager would talk like this all the time. He, he was not too smart. And then Dr. Fox, here under my hat, was the authority on everything. And doctor talked very, very carefully. And uh, he gave everybody advice. The air and the wind <laughs> is rather like a woman, don't you think? Oh, is that so? Why is that? Changeable, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Since those were the days when most shows were still live, Hal was at the mercy of technicians to give voice to those puppets right on cue. Instead of starting school, I don't I mean, know. I'm sure uh, I'll like the teacher, but uh, isn't travel the best way to learn? That's well, what I've heard. Yeah, that's what And then we can say. just forget school, right, Al, right? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think we better forget school. The engineers were free, although I wanted to talk about a particular theme, they were free to ad-lib or tease me or do anything. And Oswald would... Uh, say hello about four times to me in the morning, and I'd say, hello, Oswald, you've said that before, that he'd say hello again. But that was what was fun about it, I think, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. I, well, I often tell my wife that it was, I couldn't believe they paid me to do it. It was just sheer happiness. It's such fun to dream about favorite things, isn't it, boys and girls? Like He needed to be doing it for the fun of it. They didn't pay him much. Back then, one of the top TV stars in town, Ranger Howe supplemented his station salary with personal appearances in shopping centers that often attracted several thousand autograph seekers. He repaid the fan loyalty by always treating his young audience with respect. I didn't ever want to talk down to children or belittle them. And I felt, uh, too, that just running cartoons was not enough, that the children are able to grasp a lot and you can teach a lot. And I would encourage teachers to come on with, with any kind of a special program. Have you ever seen the wind? No, you haven't seen the wind. You've seen what it can do to other things. And you know, we can find this out for ourselves while we're sitting right here in front of the television. How could you? make wind while you're sitting here. Let's see, I think four rings is Mabel. Hello, Mabel. Ranger Howe made his last call to Mabel the operator 13 years and three Emmys after the program began. Hello. In 1969, he hung the old phone on his kitchen wall at home, packed up his puppets, and moved behind the scenes where he remained in broadcasting until an illness forced his permanent retirement. 
Now he relaxes on his small spread in Virginia, boards horses to remain busy, takes an occasional class at a local community college, and leaps at any opportunity to remember the good old days, even some very forgettable jokes. Here's a quiz. What time is it when an elephant sits on your face? Uh, you, uh, you got me. I'm afraid to answer that one. I don't know. What time? Time to get a new face. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here's another one. <laughs> oh, my. How can you tell an elephant is sitting in your bathtub? <laughs> I give up. You can smell the peanuts on his breath. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see an elephant take a bath? I've got a surprise for you. Watch. The jokes may not be memorable, but the times certainly were. Presenting a live TV program for children, says Hal Shaw, was just delightful. The children were just glorious. I mean, I, they, I feel today that we, we could learn something from young children. They, they're still believers, and they're not doubting anything. And what a wonderful way to be. And I guess I was young that way, and still I'm young that way, too, because I, I had faith in our country and the flag and so on, and, and this restored my, my feeling, and I, I miss that terribly, because now we're so sophisticated and so skeptical, and, and we don't trust each other, and we've, we've lost a lot of that those that children could teach us. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? My, oh my, it's nice to see you. 